Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, this is gonna be a, a shorter video. Um, and then remember, as this is Saturday morning, there will be no video on Sunday, okay? Because that's my Patreon day. But we, we're basically going to be focusing on Camilla today. We're going to cover a few small items and then Camilla. So let's go. Really quickly, the Princess Royal is still in Cyprus. She went to the Wayne's Keep Military Cemetery there because there was a service of remembrance and a wreath laying. Very nice. Looking at William and Catherine, you know, I think they are responding to some things that Harry and Meghan said, but in subtle ways. Here's a perfect example. Um, Harry and uh, Meghan said that they never are supposed to coordinate. William and Catherine went out in coordinating outfits, which is directly against what Harry and Meghan said that you could do. It's being said that Kate Middleton's, quote, magic is what's making people ignore Harry's book, which is now coming out. People are saying that some of the stuff in that book, again, I'm not read it, but they're saying that some of the stuff in that book is so petty, it's absolutely laughable. Well-wishers were going up to William and Kate, and there was one woman who grabbed her hands and said, just keep going, and William said, I will. They received a very warm welcome. Yeah, the public's behind them. Next up, New Zealand Airline decided that they were going to respond to Harry's claims. Remember, what he said was um, he texted Thomas Markle and said, there's all this stuff's going to rain down on you. You need to get here. We've booked you a first class ticket. And this was New Zealand's response on Twitter. Remember, by the way, New Zealand doesn't have a first class, nor do they fly from Mexico to the UK. Personally, I think this was the perfect response. And somebody on Twitter said maybe the cabin crew was from the Soho house. <laughs> Moving on. Next up, a thank you to Megan's Mole for pointing this out. Uh, we know that Harry flew there on another private jet. Has anybody noticed that he doesn't even try to talk about the environment anymore? He's left that bandwagon way behind him. She also pointed out that there have now been three versions of Megan's miscarriage. And she's right. The first version was the one that Megan wrote. Here it is. You can free the, freeze the screen and read it for yourself. You know, I just got up, made breakfast, blah, blah, blah. In Harry's book, he says, you know, they were in the house for one day and she collapsed to the floor and there was the miscarriage. Now, the next thing you're going to hear is the third story that was given during the Netflix documentary right after I watched it. Listen to this. Over. Now, is it this time that a friend of Abigail says, well, I was meeting Megan outside the new house in Santa Barbara because we were going to unpack and get settled and she's showing me the home. So they hadn't even moved into the home yet. And she's like, I'm in pain. And she's holding Archie and she fell to the ground and she had a miscarriage. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You never have to worry about telling the truth if you don't lie. Now, I have to tell you, the polls that they're doing show that William and Catherine are still extremely popular. And it looks like Harry and Meghan might have dropped as low as below Andrew. You can't get much lower than that. And you guys should know that ex-staff are not backing down from the bullying claims. I've already told you that. But the interesting thing is now they really are asking to be freed from their non-disclosure agreements. They have had enough of Harry and Meghan playing the victims. They wish to step forward. I wonder if you can release them from just a certain part of the NDA. I'm not sure how NDAs work. It would be interesting to see if they could just release them from like, I don't know, one portion of it. Interesting. I mean, Harry addresses some of the bullying claims in the book, you know. He says she uh, made her staff miserable, driving them too hard. How she was emailing people early in the morning when she, what she was actually doing, he claims, was trying to stay in, in touch with her night owl friends. Uh, no, your night owl, you could call them at noon, it would be 6 a.m. their time, or at 3 in the afternoon when it would be 9 a.m. You don't have to call people or text people at 3 o'clock in the morning. 
All right, moving on. Here we go. Dickie Arbiter, who was the late Queen's press secretary, has demanded an apology from the publisher Penguin Random House because apparently Harry's ghost-written book claims that he warned Harry and Meghan they could expect, quote, no mercy from the British establishment. It's being claimed that the words in question actually came from the former chair of the London Assembly, Mr. Phillips who said something along the lines of Harry and Meghan can expect no mercy from those who like things just as they are. Hmm. Personally, I wouldn't hold my breath for that apology, Mr. Arbiter. All right, moving on. We noticed that Michael Strahan is missing from the morning show. Now, it's possible he took a different day off, but everybody went, wait a minute, did he get markled? Because he did the interview and then he disappeared. Hmm. Moving on, I just had to address this. They're saying Harry has mommy issues. Are you kidding? I think that's, I think everybody in the world knows he has mommy issues. Every other word out of his mouth is about Diana. Diana, Diana, Diana. All right, going back, do you remember just the other day, I think everybody's heard the part where Harry was talking about his frost-bitten private parts and how he opened the cream and the smell of it took him back to his mother? Well, here's a little bit more of what he said. It's so hard to think of Mummy in the realm of death. Mummy who danced with Travolta, who quarreled with Elton, who dazzled the Reagans. And could she really be in the great beyond with the spirits of Newton and Chaucer? Between these thoughts of Mummy and death and my frost nipped, you know what, I was in danger of becoming as anxious as the groom. You guys, I'm telling you, uh, I think it's called the Oedipus. Uh, look it up. Now, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Harry's direct strike on Camilla was, I think, is going to be his undoing. Um, and then he claims he didn't attack her. He did attack her. So let's take a look at some more swipes that Camilla made, supposedly, per Harry against him, his brother, and the royal family. To start with, Harry described when he introduced Meghan to his father and stepmother in 2016, right after she met Prince William and before they went to the house, which was Clarence House, which is where King Charles lives, Harry told Meghan not to curtsy to Camilla. Harry told her it just wouldn't be appropriate. Next up, Harry claims that Camilla eavesdrops on the conversations that were going on elsewhere. So he says, you know, during that meeting where he told Megan not to curtsy, the four of them spoke and it was fine. And then he said that Camilla and Megan bonded over their shared love of animals and that Charles and Megan went into conversations about, I don't know, tea. So if the four of them are sitting together talking, how exactly is Camilla eavesdropping? The next thing he said is that Camilla told Megan it was her turn to be the bad guy because before their engagement was announced, Harry claims Megan became more concerned about how the press was talking about her and that earlier in the year, apparently somebody had taken some of her scenes from Suits and uploaded them to a porno website. Harry says, you know, Megan turned to Camilla for advice and Camilla didn't give her any reassurance of any kind. So supposedly Camilla said to Megan, listen, this is what the press does to everybody that's new. It'll pass in time. I was the bad guy once. And Harry goes, oh, so now it's Meg's turn. Now, according to Harry, it was at that very same meeting again, where Camilla is the one who suggested that Harry and Megan move to Bermuda. He says, yeah, she said, Harry should become the governor general of Bermuda. And she put forth the suggestion as it would take the couple out of the middle of London and quote unquote, out of the picture. Now you guys should know that in 1937, just for context, Edward and Simpson visited Germany as guests of Adolf Hitler. Edward actually gave a Hitler salute, a Nazi salute. When the war was over, they found a cache, American diplomats discovered a cache of German documents. And one of the documents outlined a plan to reinstate the former royal to the throne. So to get them out of the way, they were sent to the Bahamas to govern the Bahamas. <laughs> you just can't make it up. 
Let's not forget he said that uh, he and Camilla wanted Kate to change the spelling of her name because there were too many ciphers with C's in them. <sighs> Let's also not forget he himself said that Camilla was dangerous because she needed to forge connections within the British press. And let's not forget that, uh, according to Harry, Camilla is the one who leaked that William supposedly had an affair. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, I think he's done. Then again, maybe he's not, because he's now saying he has enough material that he has held back. Because if he ever released it, his family would never, ever forgive him. That just shows how delusional he is, because they're not going to forgive him for this. He's finished. Now, on another note, uh, Black Lives Matter activist Imarn Ayton said that Harry and Meghan have proven themselves to be liars. She was on the Piers Morgan show. It was brought up all the things that Meghan had said during the Oprah interview where she said, yes, you can assume this. Yes, you know, racism. Um, you know, they, they didn't want to give Archie protection or, or a title or all of these things. And there were conversations about the color of his skin, etc., etc., etc. I find it interesting that even people from Black Lives Matter are starting to realize that there's an issue and they're stepping up to the plate and going, you know what? Mm, they're liars. They are liars. There you go. Hmm. You know, I can simply say at this point, it just looks like Prince Harry is deeply unhappy and troubled. If he's so happy in his current life, he wouldn't constantly be complaining about the life that he left behind. You know what I mean? He'd be basking in the glow of his new life. Well, I have to tell you guys, we had a horrible storm here. And this is where I found Finn. He jumped up on the pillows. Just watch this. Now, I have to tell you that right now we're under a tornado watch and it's raining out and poor Finn. Finn, it's okay. He's like hiding behind the pillows, looking very, as you can see, serious. You're all right, Bubby. Hey, it's okay. It's all right. But don't worry, the storm passed and Finn is back to his normal self today. All right, you guys know what I want. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've already hit it, double check to make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to leave those comments below. Don't forget to go up into the description box and you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon. If you're donating through the Coffee Fund link for the month of January, don't forget we're still doing our fundraiser and money that is donated through the thanks button through uh, Google is money that comes to me. And as always, you guys, have a great day.